All right, guys, welcome back, and we're going to jump right into this. Now, this one's going to be a lot shorter, a lot easier than our last video. Our last video had a lot of theory and all that stuff with how bottle works, how routes work. It was a lot of fun. I hope you learned a lot. If you want me to go more in depth on any of those subjects or, you know, post, get, delete, put requests, all that stuff, how you might use those, uh, go ahead and drop a comment and I will possibly do a video on those, uh, trying to explain them as best as I can for you guys. Now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to render some HTML. So this should be pretty easy, right? And it is pretty easy thanks to Bottle's built-in template engine. It's a, uh, I think they call it like their simple template engine or something. It's, it's very easy to go ahead and create uh, dynamic HTML templates for your application. So the first thing we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to uh, create some folders. Now, I'm going to create two folders. I'm going to call one static. You'll see why here in a second. I'm going to create another one called views. Static and views, the names of those are very important. Make sure you do name them those uh, because Bottle is going to go ahead and look for it, uh, especially for the views folder. It's going to look for that directory in order to find your HTML pages or your uh, TPL pages if you're doing templates or whatever. We're going to stick to just HTML. Um, there's not much of a difference there. I think you can name template pages HTML and HTML pages TPL. Um, it's just more semantics. Uh, so we're just going to use HTML. Just keep it easy. Uh, don't worry about all that other stuff if you don't know what it means. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right in. So what's this first thing? Uh, right now we are returning hello world. So we've got the app spun up right now. If we go ahead and look at it, hello world. You might think, okay, this is an HTML page. Cool. Actually, if we go look at the source code, um, it looks like it did put it in an HTML, uh, you know, it gave us a head and a body, but there's nothing else there. There's nothing there. And you can see we did not define that head and body there. Uh, so that's just how a browser renders plain text that you send it. It puts it in a body and says, okay, well, I did the best I could, uh, but we're going to do a little better than that. We're going to define an actual template and put that uh, information into the template. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, now that template, again, is going to be located in views. We're going to create something. We'll call it index.html. There we go. Now, uh, whatever text uh, editor or IDE or whatever you're using should have something similar here. But what I can do is I can come up here. And I can't remember the shortcut for it. So I'm just going to say it's called a live template for uh, PyCharm. Insert live template. Oh, there's no shortcut set up. But you can see here I've gotten all of these. I think if you use in VS Code and if you just type an exclamation point, this will come up. And then you just want to go ahead and hit enter and you'll get this uh, pre-built HTML thing. If you don't have that, go ahead and pause the video and copy this down because it's pretty basic stuff and you're just going to want to put that into your index.html. <laughs> okay, so if you've got that, I'm going to go ahead and rename this to my site because we're so proud of our new site. It's going to be the best site on the web. On the web. It's going to look awesome. Uh, and so here I'm just going to put an h1 tag. This is just basic uh, HTML here. An h1 tag, so this is a header, and it is of the most importance. It's the first most important thing. So it's going to be pretty large, and it's semantically important as well. So we're going to say, um, you know, this is my site, or you can say whatever you want there. I'll say hello world, you know, whatever. So you could say, you could say both. You could say hello. I always do that with a W. Hello world, and then uh, below that, you can just define a p tag. P tag is just paragraph. Uh, you could say this is my site. Um, so there we go. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and look in the browser. Nothing's changed. We still got hello world. And that makes sense because we defined a template, but we didn't tell Bottle how to render it. So let's go ahead and do that. In order to do that, we need a new handy function here from Bottle called template. And all we have to do now is return that template function. And what do we give it? Well, what we give it is the uh, location of our template. And remember, it knows to look in the views directory, so all we have to do is tell it it's called index.html. Once we tell it that, it knows to go look at views, find index.html, and render it as a template. Now right now, it's not rendering it as a template per se, it's just rendering some HTML, because all we have in there is HTML. But you'll see the, the real power of this here in a little bit, uh, perhaps in another lesson, when we start putting Python uh, into these and we start using variables in our HTML, which is not normally possible, but it's possible with Bottle because its template engine renders HTML out of your template. So now that we've told it to go ahead and render this template right here, now if we come back, we reload, 
there we go. We've got this hello world h1 tag and we've got the this is my site paragraph tag. So there we go. Uh, so now we want to be able to go to the blog. Now if we want to do that, uh, let's define a, another template or another HTML file here called blog.html. There we go. Now I'm just going to go to my index.html page. I am going to copy all of this and I'm going to paste it in here. But instead of uh, saying hello world, this is my site, I'm going to say, you know, um, I'm going to say uh, get an, give it an h1 tag and say welcome to my blog. There we go. So now I'm going to actually show you what you could do with some Python here. Uh, it's just some pretty simple stuff. Um, here, first of all, let's render using template. Let's render the template of blog.html. Now, this is a template because, like I said, we can pass things into it. Well, how do we pass things into it? We pass them in as keyword arguments. So we can do that by defining um, some variable and passing it in. So let's say we say text equals hello. Pretty simple stuff. We come here and then we say uh, we want to use text, right? So let's come here and let's test that. If we go to the slash blog and let's reload and we get text. Well, we wanted to see the variable that we told it was hello. So why didn't we see that? Well, it turns out there's some special syntax we need to use, right? We need to use these curly brackets here. These curly brackets say to the template engine, now hold on, this isn't just text. This is going to be a variable. Go ahead and grab that variable that I told you what it was over in the app and render it here in the HTML. So now if I say text right here, and we can give it some spaces here just to read it better, it's going to go ahead, instead of text, it's going to render what we told it to render there. So if you want to tell it to render uh, your name, so for me, you know, just Dan, and reload, and there we go, Dan. We can tell that to be whatever we want. Well, we want to render a bunch of posts. This is the post list function and the blog homepage, right? So in order to render a bunch of posts, well, we need to have a bunch of posts. Now, we could define the posts right here inside the blog function, but that doesn't make a lot of sense because we're going to need those same posts when we're trying to update or to delete something or read it back. You know, we're going to need that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and define it globally. We're going to say posts equals just an array. I'm going to pass a string into here, say say post one, right? Um, and now that we have that global post and in Python, in order to use a global variable inside your function, uh, you just say global post, posts. And there we go. So now Python knows, okay, when he says post, he's not defining something new or anything like that. He's trying to access this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and say posts equals posts. There we go. Now I could have called this something different. I could have said all posts, and then I could have checked for all posts inside my HTML. But I typically name them the same thing, just for uh, simplicity's sake. But you don't have to. Um, so now I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to render out the posts. So there we go. And if I reload this, there we go. I get that array, post one. Um, but now say I had two posts. Oops. Post two. There we go. Reload, probably gonna have to do it twice, three times, there we go. Um, and we've got post one, post two, but this isn't particularly pretty, it's not what we want, we wanna render some HTML, right? Uh, so how might we do that? Well, there's all sorts of things you can do uh, in Python here. So first of all, what we can do is we can do an if statement. We can say if posts, right? Does post exist? If it does, then we're gonna, we wanna use it. So if posts, then here we're, we're not going to do anything yet. We're just going to say um, we will render posts or whatever, just some placeholder text for now. So just like say, um, oops, just say going to render posts, right? Um, and then we can say else, we'll say there are currently no posts. How about adding one? And we'll, we'll make that a link here in a little bit. You know, just let them add one by clicking on adding one right there. Um, and then we want to end this if statement right here. Now let me walk you through the special syntax we just did. This right here is if posts do this, else do this, and then end. Now, the if and else, that's pretty normal other than this little um, percent sign there. But like the brackets, all that does is say, hey, 
I'm doing some Python here. Render it out as HTML for me. Um, this end is how we tell the template engine, okay, we're done with the if else statement, now just carry on as normal with HTML, whatever else other Python code we have in here. Uh, so that's all that's doing right there. Now you can do a lot more with this, and we will later when we want to actually go through the posts and render them. We're going to render them as, um, you know, we're going to loop through them with a for loop, just like we can in Python. We're going to do it here. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead, and if we save this and we come back and we reload, this is, says it's going to render the post. Now in Python, an empty array I think is a false value. So if we have no posts, let's reload that. There we go. So if there's no posts in that post array, it says there's currently no posts. How about adding one? So there we go. So there you have it. You've got your two home pages, your index page, your blog uh, home page. And uh, currently we've just got some pl placeholder text in there. But we're going to go ahead and um, add some more stuff later. Now I said we we're going to turn this into a link, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to create an href uh, right here. It's an anchor tag with an href, and we're going to send it somewhere. Well, we've defined all these routes, and what did we say was the route for creating a new post? If we go and check here, creating a new post is blog slash post form. So let's just send them to blog slash post form. I can type, there we go. When they click on this adding one text here. So now if we go ahead and reload, if we click on adding one, we get sent to form to create a new post. Pretty awesome, right? And we're going to actually create a new form there later on. Uh, so you can add post to this array, and then it will no longer say, I don't have any posts. It'll show you the posts that you do have. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that next lesson. Hope you learned a lot. Any questions, let me know, and I'll try to get them answered. See you guys.